Welcome back to Meet the Authors with Philip Levin. I'm honored to have as our second guest on today's segment, Al Sosha. Al Sosha here from the Kiln, who has a long history to talk to us about moonshine in Mississippi. He is the expert recognized by the legislature with a special honor, and he's going to tell us about how he's researched the beginnings of moonshine and this wonderful book he's written called The Moonshine Book. It's now in its 10th edition. So with no further ado, Al, tell us about moonshine in Mississippi. <laughs> well, folks, moonshine came in Mississippi in 1699 to this very spot that we're sitting in, sitting in right now. Excuse me. And all of my work is about moonshine legends in Mississippi. And 1699, Iberville Lemoyne came to the colony of Biloxi, and he set up right here, and my ancestor made the first moonshine in Biloxi and in Bay St. Louis back in 1699, and we've been making whiskey ever since. What was the name of your first, uh, of your ancestor? Jean, ba Jean Baptiste Sochet, J.B. Sochet. Great. And he, he got the first land grant to settle on Bay St. Louis as a, a you know, a, a land grant settler. So he is the first family to hit Bay St. Louis. All of my work is around the stories connected to Kill, Mississippi, which is world renowned for moonshine. There's been all kind of events, significant events with people and, and event and things that have happened uh, with moonshine and Kill, Mississippi. What kind of events? Well, like, uh, John F. Kennedy's daddy, Joe, bought a thousand gallons of moonshine from us back in the day. Wow. And he had killing moonshine all over Europe. Huh. He was selling it because it's a hundred proof, you see. And so that's one of the events. And of course, uh, we had a, a, a famous football player to come down there and have his Super Bowl party in the kill huh. at the old broke spoke bar, you see. Uh -huh. So there's all kind of events that, and uh, another thing Kill's famous for is that these little bitty family whiskey seals have produced over a million gallons of moonshine in the last 300 years. That is great. And so there's all kind of pretty good things that have happened. Kill Mississippi began back in the 1770s with the collapse of the French Empire. So New Orleans collapsed and it went to the uh, Spanish and then Mobile collapsed to the English, you see. So uh, people left those horrible places where they were having all the killings and robberies. All the French people lost all their possessions and they escaped with their life. And their moonshine. And, and their moonshine. <laughs> well, moonshine was for medical purposes until, night, and until the 1900s. I always believe that, that moonshine is good for medical purposes. I recommend it to all my patients. <laughs> so tell us, I mean, you know, you had a lot of adventures. I remember you telling me about going up to the Jack Daniels uh, Brewery and, tell, and uh, dealing with the people up there. Tell me about that little Absolutely. story. Absolutely. Jack Daniels had given away land deeds for... 50 years right now. Well, folks, when you buy my moonshine book, you get a land deed to Moonshine Valley. There's none <laughs> more valuable in the whole wide world. <laughs> so anyhow, I really enjoyed my time up there at Jack Daniels looking at all that stuff. And on the subject of whiskey like that, we now have a legal distillery in Kill, Mississippi. Matthew Crittenden is our new distiller. And he's doing a fantastic job filling those whiskey barrels with some good old kill whiskey. That is a great story. Glad to hear about that. Now, uh, tell us a little bit about the book. Tell us about the research you did to put this book together. I've looked through this book, and there's some wonderful pictures and great little stories and so much historical data. Tell me where you gathered all this stuff. Well, I gathered all that stuff from my life. All, all of the work is about my experiences, my grandpa. Uh, my daddy, all through the family, you know. And so uh, some of it came from Frenchmen and French ways of the Mississippi Valley, you know, some of the work did. But uh, mainly, the, these are stories from people that I know, that I, I grew up with, 
family, friends, business people, and all that, you know, over this over time. So have you ever distilled moonshine yourself? Have you ever worked with a still in your family? No, I, I never did, but my whole family did. Mm -hmm. Now the revenue, believe it or not, had a history, had a hit on me for moonshining. Mm. And back in the day, there's a federal order by the federal judge in Biloxi telling me, telling the revenues to go get me, put me in jail. <laughs> for, for moonshine, and I wasn't moonshining, but they thought I was because of my association with a large, with a family that created the largest super still in the South in 1950. What what so, family was that? That was the Schubert family. Ah, the Schuberts, yeah. Yeah, the Schuberts from Bay St. Louis, and uh, Ramsey Cameron is actually the man that created the still. He and Junior Bayless had the largest super still in the nation. Well, that's, yeah. well, those are wonderful stories. Now, don't forget, pick up your copy of the Moonshine uh, book by Al. Where can the people find this book? Uh, my book is available online, alsochet.com, or Moonshine. Uh, you just go to alsochet.com, and it'll come up buy, under Buy Books. All right. Well, and then up and down the coast, at, you know, at, at the Lighthouse Visitor Center, at the uh, the Biloxi store, one you just yeah, mentioned. Southbound Books. Southbound Books has it. Uh, Dempsey's and the Kill has it. My my books are all Bay Books in Bay St. Louis. They have it. That's great. It's available all over the coast. Yeah. Thank you, Al. It's been a great delight to talk with you. Go to my website, DrStreams.com. You can pick up any of my books or any of our guests' books. All the guests have been invited to put their books on my website and get them directly from there. Mm -hmm.